Welcome to the second part of my Luet David 3 video. Uh, so I made the first part uh, a couple of months ago and well, maybe uh, you were able to tell that this intro is uh, recorded somewhat later than the actual video parts. Um, I don't know what the tall sign might be, maybe that I'm wearing a different shirt than in the video. Um, but uh, in this video, in the first video, I talked about uh, what made me decide to buy the Luet David 3. But since uh, I have a love for rambling on about weaving, I had to edit the video into two parts. So where the first part was about deciding which loom to buy, the second part is about my experiences assembling the loom, uh, because I think this can be very helpful for people who have actually bought the David 3. So this for you, uh, or if you're planning to buy it or waiting for it, uh, but also um, my first thoughts about owning and weaving on the loom. So if you're interested in some specific parts about the video, as always, there's timestamps in the description. So check those out if you want uh, to see certain parts of the video. And if you want other weaving content, uh, not on the David 3 or more information about the David 3 as I weave on uh, this lovely or some other rigid heddle videos, perhaps um, check out my channel. Um, but tell me, Sarah, in the past, what are your experience assembling the David 3? My experience assembling it. Um, so you get a folder when you get the loom because it comes in like flat packs basically. Um, there's a folder with like descriptions and pictures. I don't know that if I have it anymore, but um, if I would have like one piece of constructive criticism is that I would have loved to get this material in with the pictures in some kind of higher resolution if it could get like emailed to you or I don't know if it's available somewhere in higher resolution I didn't really find it because the pictures are kind of hard to see um, on the printout I found some sometimes um, like the, the detail level and I feel like it would have been great to get them like in a PDF or something with higher resolution where you can just kind of zoom in and really really see what you're looking at uh, but otherwise I think the instructions were really good and what's also really good is that there is a vi video and I can link it in the description and you can find it you can search it I mean if you just search Louis David 3 you will find it there's still like an assembly video um, that they put up and it's like one hour 40 and I had like in anticipation already watched this video and to know like what was coming and then I watched it while I was assembling it the loom um, so that was really really good and helpful so I used like a combination of that video uh, and uh, of the folder that they the loom comes with to assemble it and I didn't really have the time to like assemble it all in one or like I couldn't wait to have the time so I like started had our hair I have it had an hour there like I had my mom come visit so I forced her to sit on a chair next to me uh, like spending time while I was like assembling the loom because obviously I couldn't wait I'd waited for this loom for 10 months I was not waiting for like four more days for her to leave to assemble my loom I was assembling my loom um, so uh, I used that and then I also used like some time where we had like meetings at work I was working for home like meetings where I just needed to like listen attend and not really talk um, that wasn't great I wasn't maybe paying enough attention to what I was doing and this was where I made a couple of mistakes um, <laughs> which uh, maybe could have been avoided if I was concentrated on the task a little bit more. So maybe just do not recommend that. But all in all, I would say the assembly went pretty um, smoothly. I did it mostly myself. I got my husband to help me a couple of times to just hold something and, and to just like, you have to drill in screws for the, for the treadles to hold the tie-ups. 
Uh, he helped me with that because we have two like uh, electric screwdrivers. So that was nice and quick when we were two, we can do it double, double speed. But I will show you, um, I will show you a little bit the things that I did incorrectly and show you some close-ups on the things that I mean, did incorrectly because I think close-ups would have helped me not make these mistakes. So maybe you can uh, be helped not make these mistakes too if you are uh, assemb like uh, putting together a Davy 3. Um, so let me just uh, move my camera. So first of all, one mistake that I made is this piece right here that holds the uh, treadles uh, is that I put it upside down. I can put, I can insert a picture from Instagram because I put it upside down. I fully assembled my loom. I fully wove on my loom, not figuring that anything was incorrectly. Um, and then someone on Instagram was like, Hey, um, I think you have, um, like made a mistake in putting your loom together or she was really nice she was like ah oh, maybe this is different for the Davy 3 but on my Davy 2 that piece should be on the other way around and yeah sure enough um and sure enough uh, it's much easier actually weaving on this thing with the piece not being upside down um so this was helpful seeing that This part uh, goes underneath the bar for the feet. I mean, it makes so much sense when you see it like this. Like, obviously, Sarah, this part goes underneath. But uh, yeah, I put it on top. Um, but I just had to take it apart, like, on the sides and uh, flip it. So it wasn't that much work. It was quite easy to fix. So that was my one mistake, and that was kind of my one face palm mistake, since I fully put it together, Vo on it, put it on Instagram, and like, hey, here's my new loom, and uh, yeah, it was incorrect. I think another mistake that I did make, if I remember correctly, is that I put this side piece on the wrong side uh, around, so it had the little nook that the cloth beam goes like this cloth beam right here sits in that nook over there um, and I think I had that go on the outside and it's the same here you have the wheel like the cog wheel or whatever you call this it has a metal piece that nestles into this nook. So these nooks needs to be on the inside so that you can put in this breast beam and have the brakes. And I think the reason I did this incorrectly is that on my um, Glimwalker looms, these pieces with the brakes they, they sit on the outside of the loom. So it felt really natural to me that all of this stuff would be on this side, on the outside, but not on David. So what has been my experience weaving then on this loom for the last couple of months? As I have made a few things on this, I've made a couple of samplers um, on this, both with four shafts and with the full eight shafts. And the last thing I made um, was an eight shaft shawl. I will go get that. I made this wool deflected double weave, um, really thick uh, scarf on it um that i haven't photographed yet it's just it's uh i will probably talk about this more in another video uh, but this is my full first like really full sized project on this loom i made a couple of small samplers i made some like pillow what's well, supposed to become pillows but i haven't sewn them up yet they're just 
fabric pieces um so i feel like i've given this loom like a, a proper feel now and it's great uh, i really enjoy it um everyone else who's saying that the louis davis is a joy to weave on uh, i agree it's just wonderful uh, it's so easy like that's what i'm really enjoying about it uh, it's really easy um, I don't know if you can hear the dog going crazy. Someone's coming into the house, he's barking. Don't mind him. Um, everything's so easy. What I really, really love is that the tie up is so easy. As I said, that has been my kind of main crux and what made me kind of dread new projects because it was like making my back hurt and I needed to take a lot of breaks don't need to do that on this one it's just like so easy to get like it has a system of texel like texel with hoops and then you hook it around little screws or little screws like i wrote screw heads it works so well um so easy to do so quick uh it has 10 treadles for the eight shafts um super easy to warp the built-in there's a built-in rattle uh, on the back side works really really well i feel like the warping works um, super quick and easy uh, warping just one person has been working really well I, I like I generally don't do really long warps so I don't know about that but just like really like change the camera a little bit again I really love that you can advance your warp while you're sitting at the loom so while I'm sitting here I can reach this um, whatever it's called <laughs> again it's english not my native language um the like the break pulley whatever um i can reach it from where i sit to loosen the brake and then i can reach the lever lever that's the word i'm looking for i can reach the brake lever here uh, release the brake and then i can reach the lever here to advance and i can advance the warp which um uh, rolls the cloth onto my cloth beam um, so uh, this release the tension uh, or release the brake and this advances the warp so for my other loom I have to get off my uh, where I was sitting get off my stool go around the back release go to the front roll up and just kind of do that thing here I can just do everything from where I'm sitting so same size but so much easier it's lovely so yeah that's what i'm talking about when i'm talking about like the convenience and and that's where kind of the the steps in engineering come in where you just take something that yeah the old system it works but here someone has really like thought about how to make things easier and more ergonomical and yeah it just works it just works really well yeah i'm just overall really happy any questions about the david three um happy to answer them uh, about uh, the loom about the assembly um, about buying it um, so ask away and uh, I hope uh, I answered any questions and uh, happy continued weaving